hello everybody. This is Storm Much Tree Conservation Education Manager with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. And I'd like to uh, thank you all for joining us today. This is our introductory video for our virtual academy that we're going to be putting on. And I think this academy is going to be perfect, especially for mid-school age uh, students that are going to be transitioning into high school, high school students, college students, maybe even adults that are looking for a career change. But I hope that we're able to um, encourage you, educate you with the various modules or videos that we're going to have today. And I'd like to thank all of our presenters that stepped up to assist with this. We had fisheries biologists, uh, wildlife biologists, game and fish officers. Um, just want to thank everybody that stepped up to help to make this a, a reality. And with this introductory video, I think it's uh, going to be pretty key, pretty important to maybe talk a little bit about our agency and to give a brief overview today. Uh, we've got Assistant Chief of Education, Craig Sanchez. So with that, I'll let Craig take it away. Thank you, Storm. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody to the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish Virtual Academy that Storm has prepared. I think you will find it very uh, enlightening. Um, there is a so much diversity within the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish as to what careers are available, the different positions that make the agency function so effectively as it does. Um, so there's uh, a lot of uh, great opportunities within the agency. Um, I'd like to give a little background on myself on, on where I came from and how I started with the agency. I'm a graduate of New Mexico State University, um, which uh, go Aggies, it's a great, great college down there. Graduated uh, in 1996 from the university. Prior to graduating though, I was able to get some, some work experience with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish as a co-op student and as a summer intern. Uh, back in those days, those opportunities were available they currently don't exist right now. However, that's not to say that they can't occur again in the future as they did offer some great opportunities for students, not only to get experience within the field, but get to know people and really, really find out if that indeed is what they want to do as a career. So I did a, a co-op in fisheries in 1995. I worked eight months with the agency and got some great exposure, great experience with fisheries, wildlife management and different things. The summer intern I worked was at the Los Ojos Hatchery. I spent the summer there and that was also a great experience learning the ins and outs about raising and growing trout. Uh, from there, um, I got hired on as a district officer or conservation officer. That was my first full-time employment with the agency. And that was really a, a great time of my career as there's a lot of diverse things that, that a district officer gets to do. They get to dabble in, in pretty much everything that the agency deals with from law enforcement to biology to depredation. Uh, catching bears is, is a lot of fun. Um, there's just a lot of great things that, that the district officers get to do and a lot of flexibility that comes with that position because they do work out of their homes. Um, I moved on to uh, training officer uh, from there and, and then to the sergeant position, which is a supervisory position within the field operations division. Um, after, after the sergeant's position, I, I took the current position, which I have, which is the assistant chief of education. And this has been a very rewarding position. It's, it's different than the field work positions. Um, they, they've both got their, their great things about them. Um, the, the thing I really enjoy about my current position is that almost everything that we do in the education side of the Game and Fish is positive. It's, it's all positive work that we do, and we're really trying to make a difference for the future of conservation within our state. So uh, with that being said, Storm, um, I'm going to go into the diversity of the agency and want to talk about the different divisions, how the Game of Fish is broken down, how it works. Um, on the screen, I've got a, a slide of, of different things that I'm just gonna go through. So kind of, I'm gonna start at the top of the agency. So 
our, our governor is, is the top of the food chain within our agency. Um, our, our governor appoints, um, there's seven game commissioners on the state game commission. They are all appointed by the governor. And they're uh, responsible for making policy and, and making different high level decisions uh, with regards to the Department of Game and Fish. Um, they, they do appoint a director who is the, the lead uh, state employee, if you will, for the agency. And the director reports to the game commission. Um, so from there, it breaks down into different divisions. Um, but that's kind of the, the upper hierarchy of the, of the agency. There's several divisions within the agency. Um, I'll start off with the wildlife management division. They're tasked with, with dealing with habitat issues, habitat restorations, different wildlife management activities um, that go out throughout the state. And I'm sure you will hear from several of the specialized biologists and different staff that work within that division throughout this academy. Uh, next will be the fisheries division. Fisheries division is also a large division. They are tasked with everything that has to do with growing fish, managing fish, and increasing habitat in fisheries throughout the state. Fisheries uh, and wildlife management divisions are both really exciting places to work and they specialize in, in their two fields within the agency. Uh, next is the information and education division, which I'm part of and which is STORM is part of. In the information and education division, we've basically got one side of that division that deals with all the information stuff, everything from social media, publications, hunting proclamations, pamphlets, advertisements, marketing. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff that they deal with on that side. On the education side of the division, we have everything from the OHV program, Hunter Education, the Recruitment Retention and Reactivation program. We've got Shooting Sports program. We've got an archery coordinator that's tasked with archery uh, in the schools type programs to include NASP, which is the National Archeries in the School program, and a new program which he's implementing, which is the Scholastic 3D Archery program. Uh, we've also got a aquatic education manager, a conservation, edu conservation education manager. Um, we've got volunteer manager. So we've got a lot of, of exciting positions in, in our division. And as I said before, um, we're always striving to, to help to educate and to um, bring a, a positive light to conservation in New Mexico. Uh, the next division is the information and technology division. And that division has staff that specialize in basically uh, computer telephonics, those types of high tech things that, that are required to make our agency run. Um, so these folks play an important role in the division. They're not necessarily biologists or, or have any job experience related to wildlife, but without these folks, um, we couldn't function as we do as an agency. So um, they're, they're, they're crucial. To, to the mission as well. Uh, human resource is also a crucial division within the agency. They're tasked with hiring um, different positions, filling positions and ensuring that, that all the uh, payroll, that type of things are, are done accordingly so everybody's getting their paycheck. So they're also uh, a very important division. Then we've got the ecological and env environmental planning division. And, and again, um, all these divisions are, are critical within the, the total functionality of the agency. In the, and I'll call them the EEP for short, the Ecological Environmental Planning Division. They're tasked with dealing with a lot of the non-game, um, endangered species type things that uh, are, are valuable to all, all you know, citizens of our state and are crucial for a healthy environment. So those folks uh, play also an important role. So as you can see, just by the division breakdown, we've got a lot of different disciplines, professions within the agency, and all of them are important to make the agency function as well as it does. And the nice thing about some of these other divisions that maybe, maybe you don't have a biology degree, but you would like to work for the Game and Fish, maybe you're an, an IT person, maybe you're a computer programmer, 
there's lots of opportunities for all these staff that don't deal directly with wildlife to go out on special operations to, and I'm going to use the example of trapping pronghorn, bighorn sheep, uh, maybe it's a fisheries project. So there's lots of opportunity in whatever division you're in to get some hands-on wildlife or fisheries experience, which is a very, very rewarding. Uh, let's move on to uh, the, the last division. And that's a, uh, it's a big division. And, and again, it's, it, it's, it, it's very important as our, our other divisions is a field operations division. Um, what this is for, for people that, that don't know, these are our uniform game warden slash officers and they play a critical role in the success of, of our management strategies throughout the state. And they're called field operations division. There's approximately 60 district officers statewide. And, and let, me, let me just say, those are, those are positions. Um, we may be down at times, depending on, on the numbers of officers we have in the field. Um, we've got 16 corporals or field training officers. We've got 16 sergeants or, or supervisors. We've got one training uh, lieutenant who's tasked with training and recruitment of officers. We've got five captains throughout the state, two majors and one colonel. And the field ops division um, is spread out throughout the state. Um, typically a captain is the head of, of an area office, which I'll go into next. We've got We've got four plus our main offices in the field. Um, each of the four area offices has a captain who is the lead supervisor of that area office and manages his, his supervisory from that office. Um, so, so the field operations division is very critical. Um, they, they do so many different things for the agency from law enforcement, wildlife management, fisheries, uh, Public relations, they, they teach hunter ed classes, they enforce OHV, they, they do a lot of things and they, they've, got to, they've got to know how to multitask because there's, there's so many different things that come their way. And what I found is many of the officers become very, very knowledgeable about many different um, aspects of the department because they deal with it in the field with our publics on a regular basis. So uh, moving on, uh, let's go to offices. So as I mentioned, we've got four area offices and one main office in Santa Fe. Um, the area offices will house, again, some of the field operations staff. They will also house some wildlife management or fishery staff for those areas. And in Albuquerque, um, not all, but most of the education staff is in Albuquerque. Um, and the remainder would be up in Santa Fe. And Santa Fe is our, is our main office. It's our biggest office. And that's kind of like the, the heart of the agency where, where all the, the things that, that need to be addressed statewide get done in Santa Fe. Um, so um, there's, there's, well, let's talk about fish hatcheries. We got fish hatcheries throughout the state. We've got, well, I'm just gonna read them off here. We've got Glenwood. Hatchery, which is down by Glenwood. We got Los Bozos Springs, which is near Pecos. Los Hojos Hatchery is uh, south of Chama in uh, Tierra Maria. We got the Red River Hatchery, which is obviously in Red River. Rock Lake Hatchery is in Santa Rosa, and Seven Springs Hatchery, which is in the, the Jemez. Um, some of these hatcheries have a unique functionality. Um, for example, Seven Springs is basically been transformed into our native trout or Rue Grande cutthroat trout hatchery where they're growing and rearing and stocking native trout back into New Mexico waters. The Rock Lake hatchery in Santa Rosa has been converted to a warm water hatchery for the most part where they're growing things like bass, catfish, walleye, those kind of things. The remainder of the hatcheries typically are growing rainbow trout, um, some may, may rear brown trout if, if there's a need for them. Um, they, they also can, can raise kokanee salmon when, when the need is there to stock those back into the waters. Uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, the wildlife management areas in New Mexico. Now, wildlife management areas are owned by the State Game Commission. 
And they're used for a variety of things to include hunting and fishing, but also uh, protection, depending on what the, the management goals are of that, of that wildlife management area. Um, there's 16 in the Northwest, there's 12 in the Northeast, there's 10 in the Southwest, and there's three in the Southeast. So with that, I hope I've given you a general overview of how the agency is structured. And, and I will tell you, again, all these different positions within the agency are critical and they are all important. And there's a lot of fun to be had in any of these positions outside of your daily job duties, whether it's a special uh, project that's going on where they solicit help from staff, any staff um, out in the field, seeing animals up close, handling animals. Um, there's just a lot of great opportunities. And I've been with the agency for 25 years and I can tell you um, it, it has been very rewarding throughout my career, um, no matter what position I was in. So with that storm, um, I'll turn it back to you unless you've got some questions or anything else you think we need to discuss at this point. No, I think that's pretty much it. I, I think you were spot on, Craig, and appreciate you for joining us today and just giving a brief overview. And I think it's important, especially in our introductory video, just to kind of talk shop about our agency, um, especially as we progress with these videos and start talking about, you know, maybe it's a roundtable discussion with our biologist or with our officers or some of the biologists giving presentations. And each of these videos, you know, it, it doesn't make someone certified or an expert in it, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. And it may even just be a small little thing that that biologist gets to do. But I just thought that some of these people would find very informative, educational, fun, and and just maybe give some direction into getting into this this field. Because I know I don't have as much time on as you. I've, I've been on with the agency a little over 15 years. I started out as a district officer and have progressed in my career from district officer. I worked as the wild turkey biologist for a bit, became a corporal, a field training officer, and then now I'm the manager on the conservation education side of the shop. You've been my supervisor twice in my career, but it's one of those that the experiences that I've had and really this truly is a profession. It's just not a job to make a paycheck. It really truly defines who you are makes you the individual that you are and in a good way. And I've grown so much as a person just, you know, and I couldn't thank the agency enough for giving me everything that, that it has. I can never give back what it has given me. So, but. Excellent. Well, I'd like to wish uh, all the participants. Well, I think they're really going to enjoy the, the virtual Academy and, and I really hope you get something out of it. All righty. Well, with that, I hope you all enjoy the uh, all the various modules and with that we'll say adios and we'll catch you at the next one